Let's see if I can change something. All right, there we go. All right. You, you got me? I got you. <laughs> so I'm currently in Senegal right now, and I'm having lunch, eating this beautiful, the most freshest vegetables and salad that I've ever tasted in my life because I don't get this kind of organic, you know, vegetables back in the States, right? So, and there's a small youth movement going on here, which I think is going to be the norm, you know, because, you know, youth is now getting really involved in politics and better understanding their local officials and who to elect and why they should be electing them. And before, we never thought politics to be something that we should be interested in. We never knew why we even voted. We never even fe felt that our votes even counted, right? And then right. I start, as I started to get older and started to understand politics, I started to understand why we felt like our vote didn't count because we only voted for presidents, for candidates. We never voted for our local officials in the areas in which we live that actually are the ones that would make the you know, changes that you would actually feel. That's right. You know? So, right. you know, and, and you're in Wisconsin, you know, you're a minority. Um, you don't really see people of your type running <laughs> this young. <laughs> you know, and, and when me and you met few, well, I could say many years ago, because that yeah. was, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, you was young, you know, you was super energetic and, and an inspiring politician. And I was super embellished by your conversations. And I always said to myself, you're going to probably one day be a future president. Because the way you thought at that age and at that time, I just knew that it's crazy. So for you to be running for Senate right now in, in Wisconsin is crazy to me. So I said, listen, I got to have a real conversation with you so the world can better understand why I'm so excited about you and, and, and getting more interested in, into politics and wanting to be a part of, you know, changing the country in America. So, you know, introduce yourself to my audience and let them know what you're about, you know? All right. Thanks, brother. Well, we've been on quite a journey, me and you, over uh, the past uh, almost 10 years or so. And uh, right. here we are here in Wisconsin, uh, running for the United States Senate. So this is a statewide race. It's ranked the number one uh, uh, or number two uh, Senate race in the entire country, you know, for the midterm elections. And like you said, you know, people often pay attention for the presidential elections. And these are the midterms, which are uh, just as important. And, uh, you know, I grew up here in Wisconsin. My parents are immigrants from India. So uh, I often talk about how my parents, you know, they didn't have access to political power. And I know what it's like to be an outsider in politics. And uh, I'm running to be the youngest uh, United States nice. Senator. Um, See, that's and, what I'm uh, talking about. Yeah. The youngest. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. The youngest. Man. That's what I'm talking about, man. I mean, we need more people of our generation in office because yeah. our, our time has changed. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't move the way it moved at the time in which they were coming up. So there's a lot of challenges and questions that need to be answered that they quite don't really understand. So we need younger leaders in office that understands this generation to make, you know, real decisive, you know, decisions for us, you know? That's right. Exactly. I mean, you think about the congressional hearings they had on Facebook a few years ago with Mark Zuckerberg, and you had these 80 year old senators saying, you know, how do you work the Facebook? How does this thing work? You know, they had no idea right. what was going on, you know? And so you need a younger generation of leaders. And one of the biggest generational shifts is getting beyond the, the old divisions, the old uh, ways of doing things. And, you know, you look at the younger generation and, you know, they care a lot more about issues than they do about uh, partisanship. And so right, we're right. building a positive message here in Wisconsin, an inclusive campaign. And so we've got Democrats, Republicans, independents, you know, libertarians, progressives, you know, everyone uh, right. is being part of this movement because it's about how we can be better represented uh, in our government. And uh, I always say the best way to get to know my style of politics is through music. You know, right. I grew up playing uh, in bands here in, uh, in Milwaukee. And, you know, the music, the spirit in these bands are it's all about open. It's about collaboration. It's about seeing our common humanity. And that's the kind of politics I'm trying to bring to the national stage. No, that's, that's wonderful. So what, what would you um, say when it comes to the party lines and all these different parties representing what they thought? Like, if you could have it your way, do you think parties would be relevant in the world of policies that you would one day inherit? You know, we, we, I'm, a, I'm both an idealist and a pragmatist at the same time. You know, right. we, we currently have a two-party system, and so I am running as a Democrat. Uh, for this office. And at the same time, there are structural reforms that can help other third parties, other new forces uh, emerge. And, you know, one of the reforms we call for 
is uh, open to nonpartisan primaries uh, right. to allow some additional forces to uh, emerge in our politics. And, you know, we have to change the incentives to allow for collaboration. You know, you hope that you have some idealistic and courageous members of Congress, but, you know, they're just going by the incentives that are pushing them to divide us up. It's financially and politically profitable right now to be just demonizing and dehumanizing other people. And so some of these reforms we're talking about in our campaign is going to help to actually bring people together and allow other forces beyond just the binary choices to have a real shot in our politics. Right. And, and I think you, you, you probably hit it on the nose when you say that a lot of the politicians are leaning to whatever side makes the most money. Right. So, yes, me personally, I'm just happy that I'm a U.S. citizen and it's a free country and I can speak freely. Right. I personally believe that our politicians are punks. Yeah. All of the sissies, <laughs> they yeah. some scary ass bitches. <laughs> Period. <laughs> they're, they're allowing the bully to bully them. And I don't yeah. believe that people that lead us should be afraid of anything. Because you are the people that hold the power to make the basic changes. Like, you are That's the right. people that we should look up to when we're afraid, mm -hmm. you know, to know that the policies that you're holding are the policies that's going to protect us. Right. But when the people that's supposed to protect you are the ones that are afraid, then we're all, we should all be afraid. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. tell, like, it feels like a lot of the politicians were the, the, the uncool kids that was in school that was constantly getting bullied and just are now a part of a system that allows you to bully others, right? So it's yeah. like, you can, you can see the difference from the ones that, that, that came up under, a, you know, a, a, like the earlier Biden to me was, he was a fighter. You know, of course, he, now he's a lot older. He doesn't have the energy as he used to. You know, he's been through a lot, you know, especially dealing with his son. And, you know, the, 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 it's a lot, you know, I can tell. And then that age is really starting to, you know, really keep, creep up. But I think had we had the earlier Biden, the fight would be so evident because he can only do but so much at this age at this point, you know? That's right. And I'm, I'm a huge Biden fan. I love Biden. I'm not going to yeah. tell you anything different, but I'm not going to change the love for I have for him because of his age. Because I know I've seen the earlier Biden leading up to what was happening today. And then, of course, the, the political switch of where the Republicans lie and where they stand. And they're not divided, believe it or not. The Republicans are actually, they're, 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 they're connected. They're united now. Because they're the reason why the world is in the U.S. is so disgruntled from a standpoint because they should be divided in making the right decisions rather in the decisions that better, right. you know, uh, uh, you could say, uh, um, indulge their uh, 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 um, agendas, you know? So That's right. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, if, I think if they made the decisions for the people rather than themselves, even themselves would be in a lot better position, you yeah. know? And, and we, I have this debate with my friends all the time about Trump, right? Everyone has something to say about Trump, <laughs> right? You know, the party Trump, the best guy in the world. We all love the party Trump. That's my yeah. man, right? <laughs> the political <laughs> Trump, there's a lot of questions there, right? But when I saw him lead for the first term of his first term of presidency, he reminded me of an African president, right? Mm -hmm. All of his policies are policies, honestly, while you plan, should have been, he had the perfect policy for Africa because Africa needs to think like Trump's, you know, whole concept because it should be Africa first because Africa has been providing for the rest of the world for so long and, mm -hmm. and never focus on its own continent, you know? So that would have worked for Africa, but it doesn't work for America when you have millions of different nationalities and different cultures that intertwine with each other every single day, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And different right. people that look at each other beyond the color lines and, and the race lines and the gender lines, like we don't reflect any of the conversations that politicians are having. That's so right. when we hear them saying A, B, and C about A, B, and C, we're like, what alphabet are these guys reading from? Because <laughs> look at me and you, like how long yeah. we know each other? We, yeah. you, 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 know, you know how many times I've been in India? I have houses in India. Like India is like one of my biggest markets in the globe. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. like so. I, the last thing we're thinking about when we talk about politics should be race, you know, but when you're talking about, you know, a history of American history, when it comes from a racial standpoint, now it's gotten to the point where the racial standpoint has become more uh, uh, age, age uh, unappropriate. And the reason why I say unappropriate is because the generation has revealed that the youngest generations are the ones that make the biggest impact in America, right? That's but right. Lot, but unfortunately, the, the, pro the policies aren't being built for this generation, right? So yeah, yeah. it creates a really uh, uh, difficult challenge in order to, to move forward when you start talking about 
you know, the, 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 the age gap and then the opportunity gap within ages. And then you start blending that with gender and, 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 and race and all of this. It really becomes a really complicated system. So you being uh, a, a runner in Milwaukee and in Wisconsin, where clearly there's a big open <laughs> discussion <laughs> about yeah. race, about yeah. gender, about age, mm -hmm. and then you being minority. And do you, or do you ever fear that maybe perhaps they may not want to listen to what you got to say? Mm. You know, it's interesting because uh, we, we've done over 150 events across the state. We've been in urban areas, we've been suburban and in rural areas. And you find that, you know, people have different issues that are affecting them, whether it's your small business owner, you have trouble hiring, you're, right. uh, you know, you're here in Milwaukee and, you know, you've got uh, all, a number of issues around gun violence and, and racial uh, injustice here. But there is this underlying theme of trust. Like people are searching for trust and dignity and something to believe in. And so when I go to these communities, sometimes, yeah, you do hear some uh, insensitive things or, you know, people are not used to seeing a brown guy uh, running for uh, the U.S. Senate here. I'm the, actually, right. I just, we just made history uh, as the first Asian ever to be on a uh, U.S. Senate ballot here in wow. Wisconsin. First yeah. year the youngest, now the first Asian. This is amazing. Yes. Yeah, this absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. It's amazing. So we find what we can connect on. I think that people really respond to honesty and authenticity. You know, one of the most common things I hear on the campaign trail is, you know, you talk like a normal person. You know, you talk like you're speaking from the heart. Like, please keep that uh, yeah. because so many politicians don't do that. And then uh, I, I also think that music is part of that, too. So we launched a bar band tour across Wisconsin where I'll play with local artists and local bands and I'll sit in on a few songs. And it's just another way that you create the entry point. You got to get there. You got to get that connection before they're going to hear from you. And uh, and I think music is one of the great uh, unifiers. So, yeah, man, it's it's about being honest and finding something you can connect on. Right. And the response has been great. Actually, so I'm a, I want to go through some of these questions that some of my fans yeah. are actually bringing in, you know. Um, and it's interesting because one of them yeah. is actually from India, um, um, which is <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, we have a huge Indian community <laughs> in uh, in America, um, and they're talking about uh, collaborations, for, uh, obviously, with Bollywood and Hollywood, mm. and how is the political realm um, creating opportunities for foreign filmmakers to be stable in America? What role? Mm. How, like, how, how was how was film in, in, important in, in Wisconsin or anything of entertainment for that matter? Yeah, you know. There used to be a time about 10, 15 years ago, we had a number of tax credits for filming to happen here. And uh, mm. one of the previous uh, administrations got rid of a lot of those uh, incentives. So we lost a lot of the film industry here. And so I, as a, uh, hopefully as the next U.S. senator, can help to attract those opportunities uh, here to Wisconsin for you know, the entertainment industry to say, hey, there are young people. There are opportunities. Uh, there's great culture in Wisconsin. We want to be able to uh, maybe film our next movie here. And we would love to ha see that Hollywood, uh, Bollywood connection. And that's something that, you know, we can uniquely do uh, in the Senate. You know, when we win this race, I'll be the only Indian American in the U.S. Senate, the only South Asian uh, in the U.S. Senate. So that yeah. gives us a platform to be talking about some of these business partnerships across a lot of different sectors, uh, including the entertainment industry. I would love to see Milwaukee become a creative capital. And, you know, we're close to Chicago. Uh, there's a lot that we can do here. And uh, I've seen, a, uh, you know, th there's some budding artists here and some filmmakers, and I just want to be able to help give them a platform. And that's something we can do uh, in the U.S. Senate. Right. So I'm, I'm looking at my, all these questions popping up. Everyone's like, <laughs> Who is this Indian guy? Like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I love that, though. So, stay away from politics for a second, right? Yeah. Stephen, tell my fans who you are. Forget about politics. Yeah. Just who you are, the person. Man. So, I grew up just outside of Milwaukee. And, you know, when, when I was growing up here, my, you know, my parents never thought about anything related to politics. It was all about you know, what kind of engineer can you become, <laughs> you know? And uh, 
But my first passion in life was music picking up. I picked up the guitar when I was in third grade. I started playing the drums when I was in fifth grade. And I uh, started singing soon after that. So I really loved playing in different bands because that was how you could tap into different subcultures. You know, I had a rock band. I had a hip hop band. I had a folk band. I had multiple jazz groups, you know, and all of these would tap into these different cultures. And so I became really interested in how do you breed, how do you help communities who might be ethnically, racially, religiously different, but help them see that they have something they can do together. And originally for me, that was music. And the first thought I had around politics was when I heard Barack Obama, you know, in 2004, and he gave that great convention speech about how they're not just red states or blue states, but the United States of America. You know, that was a political expression of what I was doing. And I didn't actually get involved in politics even then. I became a radio DJ, you know, what? just the basic <laughs> idea. Yeah, I became a, I, this basic idea of having a dream and pursuing it and stepping, se- stepping outside of your comfort zone to pursue that dream. That's right. what I got out, out of that Obama speech. So I, I went down to this radio station. I didn't know anyone there. And I became a DJ within six months. That's and crazy. Yeah. So I'm a big believer. My favorite book is The Alchemist. Uh, And if any of your followers have heard of that, it's a great book about following your purpose. And it says when you walk in your purpose, the universe starts to conspire for your success. But to find that purpose, it's taking a leap of faith. It's taking a risk. It's going down that path that feels right in your heart, but maybe feels uncomfortable to you. And you got to follow that. And that was the same instinct I had, you know, a few, uh, I guess, over a year ago now about running for the Senate. I felt like this is just a moment for real, real change. And so I have an unconventional background getting into politics, but I think we need more people like that uh, running for office. So, yeah, that's a little bit about my uh, my background here. No, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So right now you have to raise, is it money or you need signatures from people explain exactly what the purpose of getting you know to as many people as possible and what it is that you're trying to convey yeah the biggest thing right now is we need uh individual contributors individual donors uh to help us get Mm -hmm. on the debate stage the local tv station just announced this oh wait 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 you say debate debate (laughs) So you, you can actually get a chance to debate? Yeah. So how can we get you to debate? That's what I want to know. That's what we got to do. So we need 5,000 people to give us a buck or $3 or $5. You know, it can be any amount of money. But we need 5,000 people to uh, donate on our website. And if we get that 5,000 by June 30th, right. my man, we're going to the I, debate I, stage. So, yeah. so, 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 so you need 5,000 people? Yeah. Or 5,000 signatures? Uh, 5,000 people. 5,000 people to donate yeah. a dollar? Yeah, it could be any amount of money, but yeah, they can give a dollar, exactly. But U.S. citizens, yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. And that it gives you the door, it opens up the door for you to be at a debate on the yeah. national stage. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And, and, but so let's say hypothetically we get you to the point of you're in office and debating on a national stage. How do you think mm-hmm. you're going to do? Like, what, oh, yeah. What, what would be the game plan? I need to know. <laughs> All right, so, well, so like, like yeah. prom is out. Let's practice. Okay, me and you yeah. are debating. Yeah, We're yeah. about to debate. Sure. And then the debate guy asked a question. Yeah. And he says, oh, Stephen, uh, <laughs> if you were caught in a scenario, how would you proceed? If Melania Trump asked you on a date, would you accept? <laughs> Well, I probably wouldn't because I'm in a committed relationship right now. <laughs> oh, dude, you're supposed to say yes. No matter what, trust me, whoever you're with will understand. She should understand you're doing this for the country. You're doing this for oh. America. <laughs> you're saying you're saying if we can if we can win this race by going on one date with Melania Trump. <laughs> Would you do it? Yes, for the greater I'll good. For you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now we talking, Daddy. Yeah. Now we talking. <laughs> hey, this is about yeah. something bigger than all of us. It's we, bigger, it's bigger, than, bigger all than, all than all of us. This date is for America, baby. 
<laughs> <laughs> nah, seriously, man. I'm, I'm thank you so much for taking the time, bro. Yeah, to thank have a conversation you, man. And open up my eyes to a lot of things. I'm gonna be asking a lot of political questions with different people. Yeah, it'll be you know people that's you know seasoned politicians, you know people that's coming up such as yourself. Mm -hmm. And as your career starts to grow, I want people around me to grow with you, better understand who you are, and people likes of yourself to be able to, you know, just kind of. You know, shape our country in the right way, man. I think the Absolutely. way it's moving is, is, a, is we're moving in a great way. America don't have to be great again. We're already great. We just That's need right. to now accept the fact that we're great and know it. You know, it's about yeah. mindset. You know, our mindset because they tell us one thing when it's something different. And as the people, we have mm -hmm. to communicate. So thanks for you know platforms like this that allow us to really talk and get to understand what it really is. So when we're speaking. Uh -huh. Nobody can pull a you know, wool over our eyes and try to tell us what it isn't. You know what I mean? So, you know, guys, Stephen Alicaro is actually running for Senate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you're a, You know, Stephen is running for Milwaukee. I mean, Senate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is my guy. Yeah. Believe me, if that debate state happens, I'm there. I'm showing up to that debate <laughs> live. So whatever we got to do, whoever we got to call, whoever you got to meet, whoever you got to apologize to, get them, <laughs> you know, get them to support my man. Let's get the 5,000 people to come on board and get my man on this debate stage, man. I'm telling yeah. you, he's thanks. a beast, you know. So <laughs> thanks again, Steve, man. Hey, thank you. And thank you, brother. Thank you. We got to make this and the happen. Goal, thank the goal, you for giving. The goal is for you. The goal is for you to make it to the debate stage so I can perform live. I want to come there live. That's gonna be that's Let's gonna be my, my my pledge. My pledge will come out there, <laughs> perform live if you make it. And this only takes five thousand people from Milwaukee to support you. That's all we need. So absolutely, support my guy, absolutely man. support my guy. Yeah, and we're we're well on our way too. And thank you, brother. And the place where people can go to make that contribution is stephenolicara.com slash revolution. Uh, and we uh, right. maybe we can include that in the description, stephenolicara.com slash revolution. This is Absolutely. the revolution we want to take to the debate stage and then to the U.S. Senate. And you, you all heard it here live. Khan's coming here to hey. Milwaukee. July. Hey, listen, <laughs> if, if you get on the debate stage, I'm there. I'm, I promise you, I'm going to gas up the plane and I'm there. I promise you. <laughs> Let's do it, brother. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Good man. Good to see you, my man. Thank you, you so much. Know, we appreciate okay. it. All right, all right, we'll see you soon. Okay, cool. bye.